and we're back. Uh, hello everyone, welcome to the second part of my Elden Ring Let's Play. Uh, last time we left off, we were just about to head into the tutorial cave. I've tweaked the audio a bit, about 10%, so hopefully um, it sounds a bit louder and better. Um, so yeah, uh, I just wanted to give a bit of a heads up, uh, at least for for the like, foreseeable future in every video I upload, there, there might be some abrupt cuts and the reason why uh, I'll be cutting the video like very randomly is because I live with my grandma and she is bedridden, she's disabled so sometimes when she calls for me I'm gonna need to go help her and that means I have to obviously stop playing and, and go there, which is fine but I'll have to cut the video sometimes at randomly and I hope that doesn't bother you now, before we head into the tutorial cave, we need to talk with this guy. Yeah, basically he's telling us in a sort of lore-appropriate way that we have to go into the tutorial cave. There's an item up there, and there's another item up there. Purple items, which you can see over there. They are a bit rarer, and they will they will commonly be also be key items. Uh, there's also key items that are even more important, and they're orange or golden, um, and you will see them a lot. So let's head down into the tutorial cave. Cave, yeah, it is a cave. You can press X to jump, or A if you're using an Xbox controller. Ha, giant butthole. <laughs> that is exactly what they try to do. Resting on the side of Great Wars are HP, FP, and cleanse you of any status ailment. You'll also refill your sacred flasks. However, most of the enemies you defeat will be revived. You can find signs of grace by going where the light converges. Yeah, so these are the bonfires of this game. Um, if you've played other Soulsborne games. Or Lanterns, if you played Bloodborne. We can rest. And we can do a few things. We can, can add a charge to our flask, which we will. Because we started with the Golden Seed, that's why I think it's the best uh, starting gift and we can allocate the charges. Oh, I skipped that, but it shouldn't be too important. Um, basically, you have on your left the health flask, on your right you have the mana flask, um, or FP. I'm gonna put all my flasks into health, because uh, I am a warrior, I don't use mana a lot. But I will use a bit because I do want to use some Ashes of War. Ashes of War is sort of like an enhancement to your weapon. It's like a special skill that the weapon has. You can change most Ashes of War in most weapons. There's some unique weapons you'll find later on that have unique Ashes of War. Okay, well, this is like your your menu for most, thing, most things. So let's carry on. Uh, if you press start, you'll see like all your... All the stuff you can change. I'll tweak. I'll tweak that and change it later on. Uh, for now, let's just do the tutorial. Rushing in required the head. Yeah, yeah, that that does make sense. We just go in and, and hit him. If you see, we did uh, 109. I believe it was 100 and something. But if I hit him with a, a one-handed attack, I do 68. Yeah, this is talking about guarding. I'm not using a shield, and I'm not gonna use it, I think. Uh, use an arm in your left hand or both hands to guard against incoming attacks. Guarding is especially effective when done with a shield. Yeah, we can actually guard with uh, just a sword. But... Yeah. We can just guard with the sword, but it's not very effective. And you can see if it's not effective or how much something is effective by going to 
to your menu and looking at guard boost. Um, and I believe if we equip our shield has a guard boost of 49 and then there's like the whole guard of damage negation. So basically, um, my sword is a guard boost of 30. That's the stamina cost or it influences the stamina cost from blocking something. The higher it is, the more, the less stamina you consume when you take a hit. So obviously you want to guard with the shield. Most importantly though, damage negation, this is a percentage. It blocks 100% of physical damage. So if I get hit with the sword from one of those guys, I'm going to be perfectly fine. With the shield, with the thord, sword though, I'm going to take 55% of the total damage they would do. So if they were going to do... Um, 100 damage to me in HP, I was on, I'm only going to take 55. So, that, yeah, you, to be completely honest, you don't want a guard with a sword ever. Like, it just doesn't make sense. What you want to do is roll. Because in this game, when you roll, you are invincible for a period of time in that roll. And that's very useful. Yeah, so that guy up there is going to have a crossbow and he's going to shoot us so we can dash. And now we're safe. He's going to keep shooting. And we can acquire materials to craft stuff. In every corner of the lands between, that's the, the world name or the region, you'll find fruits and flowers, mushrooms and butterflies and various other useful materials. These materials can be used for crafting. Indeed. Uh, these particular fruits are not very useful, but there are some very useful crafting materials you can get later on. Also, that guy is not going to turn around and shoot me, is he? Yeah, he doesn't. Alright. Um, yeah, this guy has a shield. Each hand can be equipped with up to three armaments. Yep. Uh, they're there are strategies for using that and for doing that. Now this guy has a shield. So if you want to break his shield, we're going to want to use heavy attacks. And then we can stab him. That's, I believe, called a stagger hit. Or if it's not called a stagger hit, it's just attacking him when he's staggered. Which mean, means he's off his balance and you can do a special attack, plays a special animation, you're immune during that animation and you do a lot of damage when you when you hit him. Um, you can actually just spam attack and break their shield. It doesn't really make a difference. But heavy attacks break their balance a lot sooner. And if I go into my equipment... This sword, this long sword, starts with the skill. Square off. This skill starts with the sword held level. Follow up with a normal attack to slash upwards to enemy's guards or strong attack to perform a running thrust. So, if I hold like this, I'm holding uh, L2 or left trigger. If I do a small attack, I do an upward thrust. If I do a strong attack, I do a stronger upwards thrust and it costs mana to use it or to use these attacks but um, they they are very powerful it's like against shielded enemies now most of the times you're not going to be using this this particular skill it's just, it's just not very good compared to others but it's good also if you've noticed if you if you click into the details or you switch display you can read a bit about like a description of um, some some items I would highly recommend you do that with every item uh, because I can as you can see there I'm just gonna read the first paragraph helm of a knight banished from their motherland dirty and battered after enduring a lengthy vagabond journey so basically this game they don't um, they don't tell you stuff. They just, straight up, they don't tell you a whole lot. You, what NPCs tell you is about more in the moment, and even then, sometimes it's quite cryptic. But 
you can get a lot of details from the world from items like for example um, this item the one washed up on the graveside was sure to die until the slight flask offered its gift of rejuvenation to seek the Elden Ring. Um, and let me let me find another one. A finger of corpse wax, so emaciated, the bone is visible. It is relic of those who came before, left to help those who would come after. Now, okay, this is not really a good example because um, they don't really tell you a whole lot. There's just like vague messages, but some other items in the game, they're going to tell you like the background of where those items come from. And those items uh, can provide you a lot of insight to the world, the characters, and like the story that came before you, before what we're doing right now, which is, you know, our current journey. So I highly recommend if you're playing on your, your own that you... Um, attempt to to read those items and try try to get a bit of a feel for the world uh, this fella here is he gonna pull out his crossbow yes he I could just dodge through the arrow and once you understand this once you understand that you have to dodge through sometimes into the enemy into the attack like for example with this guy yeah, they're gonna tell me about skills. If I dodge I into him... Oh, okay, well, it sort of worked. Um, if you do that, you can actually have a lot more success than you usually would. Also, what I did just there was a backstab. Backstabs are pretty much like stagger hits. I believe they do the same amount of damage. Unless specified otherwise. And that means that you can sometimes take care of certain enemies by just going around their back and and hitting them. It does a lot of damage. Most of the time you'll even be one-shotting if you're at an appropriate level for that zone. Yeah, it's a critical hit, that's what they call it. Oh, you can see the next area from that hole. So attacks may break an enemy's stance, giving you a chance to perform a critical hit. Yeah. So uh, you can also do jumping attacks. I believe jumping attacks were nerfed since this, the launch of the game, which was the last time I did a proper like melee run. I think. So I've actually done three playthroughs, sort of. Two and a half. Uh, one is a dexterity character. That was my first playthrough. And also my first time using dexterity characters in these games. Uh, my second playthrough was a mage. Um, and my third playthrough was like a mixture of a lot of things. Didn't quite go too well, to be completely honest. Um, so yeah, uh, now the states of America, there's just like respawn points, checkpoints, there's not really much to say. Now, the golden mist, or fog gate, depending on like how old of a player you are, you might call them fog gate. They are, in this game I think, only used for boss arenas. So you know there is a boss coming up. Oh, see, if I rolled into him, I wouldn't have been hit by that. Obviously. This was a very easy boss. It was the tutorial boss. It's not really supposed to be hard. But later on there will be quite quite a few hard bosses. Um, also, I 
Actually, no, I'll still talk about that later. I was gonna talk about spirit summons. But I'll talk about that later on. And we got a new gesture. We cannot access that item over there yet. That, unfortunately, comes a bit later. It's not, it's not that hard to get to. I'll tell you where it is. But we can't get to it. Not right now. So, we are gonna head out. That was a tutorial cave. I would highly recommend you do it if you're new to the games. And even if you're not, it gives you a few souls. Pretty much for free. Always check your corners. That is a good tip. Okay, I guess these will be fog gates in this game. These sorts of fog gates that you can actually see through. Or, yeah, see through. Um, they require you to have a stone sword key to open them. I'm not going to open this because I, I know what's behind it and it's not really easy to do as of now. But... I will come back at some point and do it. Cooperative multiplayer. I'm not going to be doing multiplayer. So I'll skip on the details for that. Um, like, in depth. But, I mean, actually I might do a bit of summoning though. Might be fun. Yeah, you can read a bit more about what they do. Finger of corpse wax for like a hook. It is relic of those who came before, left to help those who would come after. This phantom blade, this phantom blade so severs the link formed by a furled finger, but the maiden scorn those who abuse its use. Yeah, so this creates a summon sign for you to be summoned, so you can help people. Uh, this writes messages, which I actually might equip. Um, and this sends people away. So if they're like griefing you or or actually no, that's for you to go away, isn't it? Oh well. Um I wanna equip something here. I wanna equip the used to write messages to other worlds. And I wanna remove this from you. Yeah. So we can write messages, I'll I'll leave one right here. First you find a template. Let's let's pick this. And then you you pick like a specific uh concept, phrase, whatever, just you know, just a word basically. Uh I guess I'll I'll give people a well done. There you go. You can even customize them further by having like two lines of messages. That was like the other tabs, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave some messages. I do like leaving some messages. And if people like your message, which, uh, let me find one. If I were to like this message, just, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna applaud it. Um, yeah, I'll say, yeah, it, w it was good. Um, the people who receives this will get healed mid playthrough. So it's good to leave messages that are helpful because if people like them, you will get heals for free, which might actually help you on your journey. So yeah, let's rest. Just recover our HP. And let's get out of this, of this place. I'm, I'm still sort of struggling with not like being too talkative about explaining the game because this isn't supposed to be too much of a beginner's guide just a little bit but not too much and i feel like i'm i'm being a bit slow here it's been 18 19 minutes and i haven't even gotten out of, of the tutorial cave or rather the starter zone because the, the other place was the tutorial cave so let's go out into the open world now bear with me i'm using a new monitor that I just recently got and yeah I can already see that my FPS are a bit lagging or are a bit low I'm currently getting 50 FPS so I'll have to tweak some settings because I, I went from 1080p to 1440p which is great but it is a bit laggy when I look in this direction I'll, I'll tweak my settings a bit after uh, this episode 
Because we're not going to be fighting anyone else, I think. And yeah, this is the world. We are now free to go anywhere we please. Be it the very end of the game. Actually, no, you have to do a couple of things before you, you go there, but you could go to, I would say, about three quarters of the map without a problem. And if we open, uh, okay, yeah, the map, it is currently quite well hidden. We will be able to, to make it visible. We'll do that next episode, I hope. That's where we came from. That's um, that's a, a grave, I believe they're called, if we go here. I guess, no, they, yeah, they call it Stranded Graveyard here, but throughout the game you'll find other, other places that look very similar to this, and they are graves of heroes, according to the lore. And they usually have very tough dungeons. So you will probably want to be ready before you head into another one like this. I don't believe there's there's one like close to here. I think there's one in that direction and a couple others in that direction. Really, really like well into the mid game, mid and late game. Yeah, you can open the map. Oh, okay, let's talk to this fellow. See what he has to say. Oh yes, tarnished are we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless, me, Vare. Take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace, the golden light that gives life to you tarnished? You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace, the path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. Grace's guidance will re Castle Stormvale. Over on the cliff, the home of the decrepit demigod, Godric the Drafted. It's time you set off, I should think, to Castle Stormvale. If you seek the Elden Ring, maidenless as you are, it's time you set to Castle Stormvale. If you seek. Sorry about that cut. This time it was because I was just checking if my microphone was actually on, because I kind of messed up with the keybinds. Um, yeah, so Castle Stormville, that's over there. That's where we're going to be heading. Um, next episode, probably. I, I, no, actually, no, we're not. Castle Stormville is it's not hard, but not something you want to tackle at level 9, which is the level we're on. We start at level 9. Some other classes start at level 1. Like, like the, the Wretched class, I believe it's called. And that... That guy. You can go around that guy, just so you know. And you definitely do want to, because he's very strong. He is something you're going to want to tackle after Stormvale, which is that castle. And if you look right over my head, that's where we started the game. That's where I said we could come back to. Now, there, there looks like there's a bridge over there that crosses to it, but that's just a bridge that we cross. It's not actually like connected to land. To get there, to get back there, you have to 
wait until about halfway through the game. Again, that I'm telling you about this. I hope it's you don't mind it being it being a spoiler. It's not really a spoiler. Like you can go anywhere. You see, it's just a matter of when. And yes, you can even go all the way up to that cliff and that tower. All in due time, of course. And yeah, these fruits. Need to grab some. Again, they're not very useful, but they will be. And this is one of the key items. I believe this is the invasion one. Uh, actually, no. No, it's not. Ooh, what is this? I cannot remember. Okay. I'm not entirely sure what's the difference between this and the others. In terms of cooperation tools, but we'll see. Anyway, as I said, I do not wish to fight that guy. Not at the moment. But... I do wish to fight this sheep. <laughs> or... This ram. Oh no, okay, he's gonna see me. Well, let's just pretend I didn't get juked by a sheep. I do apologize again for the... Um, for the FPS. It's still at 50, which is high. There we go. Yeah, we get a, bus a bunch of things. It's 50 is still not, not bad, it's just... Could be better, I guess. It might be a bit choppy for you. Golden rune. Golden runes. And I guess I could talk about runes. Um... Runes are like the currency of the game, and it's and also your XP. They, they, they both share the same, same or yeah. The runes like the the shared currency between the two. This is a very pretty area, I must say. There's even prettier areas. This game is very pretty. It's the the art direction and art style in this game is great. Like you could look at the ground and see the textures are good, but they're not mind blowing but the game is probably one of the prettiest games you, you can play at the moment. So as I was saying, runes are your XP and they are your currency. You can see them in the bottom right. Runes that you find throughout the game, like golden runes, they they just give you more XP. Like they're just like, they're, they're the equivalent of rare candies from Pokemon. They just give you like more, they're an item to level you up. Usually it's recommended that you keep some for emergencies, like let's say you want to level up but you're like, I don't know, a thousand runes short, you just pop one of those golden runes and you don't have to go out and kill an enemy, just just get that, that level up because there'll be times where you're gonna, you're gonna be like 20 minutes between level ups from just like exploring and doing random stuff. So you want to have golden runes on hand to to like cap you off now i will talk to that guy in the next episode and we'll hopefully also get to do other stuff um so yeah thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed the pacing even though it's a bit slow i hope you've enjoyed hearing me talk about the game and explaining it i mean sometimes you just learn new things and i'm sure i'll learn new things from reading comments if someone happens to to read comments and i i hope you at the very least, and I'm not gonna be asking for likes or subscribe, that's not what this channel is about, but I do hope you comment and tell me like new facts so I can share them in the videos. So for now, I'm gonna be resting at this lost grace and I, yeah, you can fast travel. I hope to see you in the next episode. So bye bye.